Packers were the only team with multiple first round selections last night. New 49ers coach Chip Kelly used both picks on Pac-12 players. This did not surprise me. Taking Oregon defensive end DeForest Buckner with the seventh overall pick and then trading up to take Stanford guard Joshua Garnett at number 28. Stephen A., what did you make of Kelly's picks? Well, the only thing that I make of it is that, you know, uh, listen, Buckner could be a stud. He's got incredible potential. Uh, we all know that Chip Kelly's addicted to players from Oregon. I mean, that, that, that's just who he is. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they need to call him the, or, the Oregon 49ers or the, or, or, or the <laughs> San Francisco Ducks. Pick which way you want to, want to go with it. But Buckner's a stud. At 6'7", uh, he can get it done. What is it? I mean, the 10 and a half sacks, 17 tackles for a loss constantly getting doubled and triple team and regardless of how much their defense struggled in that three four he was still legit there's no question about it if you're the 49ers however you need you need help all the way around offensively you rank dead last in the league you had the 29th rank pass and attack 21st in the run so you need help on offense but defensively even though you were 18th overall you were 27th against the pass. You were 29th against the rush. So they definitely need help everywhere. I can't sit there and look at Buckner and poo poo to pick because his cachet is legit. There's no doubt about it. Although I would say this. If you're that much of a stud, Skip, and you're six feet seven, how do you go seventh? I mean, when I think about a six seven stud, I'm thinking J.J. Watt caliber, you know, kind of dude, because even if you can't get to the quarterback, you can impede his vision on one side of the field because if you get close enough to him, particularly with your arms, your wingspan, your height, et cetera, you can do a lot of damage just patting down footballs. That's the way I look at it. And so that's a question mark for me. The other question mark for me is the fact that Chip Kelly and Trent Baalke picked him because we all know that Trent Baalke's on the clock. His days in all likelihood may be numbered since he ruined the franchise because he couldn't find a way to get along with Jim Harbaugh. So I just look at it from the perspective that I'm not high on it, but it has nothing to do with Buck. It has everything to do with Chip Kelly and Balky collaborating with one another to make this pick because I don't trust them at all. I thought this was so classic Chip Kelly. And it amazes me, and by the way, I used to call them the Philadelphia Ducks, if you recall. It amazes me that Chip Kelly not only quickly got another job, to, to your, your point that you usually have about this At league. Six how million does he, per. How do you just fall into the next job after that disaster in Philadelphia? And furthermore, mm. I don't know whose input was how much. You know, I don't know if it's Balky or Chip or some sort of collaboration, but both of these picks had Chip Kelly's fingerprints all over them. And I agree with you, I, I like the measurables of DeForest Buckner, but obviously I laughed out loud, he's a duck, and he took another duck. And then, by the way, the, these kids might be ducking last night because I, I got a compliment Coach Gruden. He, he was spitting fire on the telecast last night because it wasn't the usual, sometimes misleading highlight packages that we consistently got. We, we got Coach Gruden critiquing, man. We had video of how DeForest Buckner occasionally got dominated because he's almost too long for his position, and he got buckled a few times and overwhelmed. So I don't know. I'm not saying he's a bust or whatever, but, but maybe he's not quite all that he's cracked up to be. And then we come to the bottom of the draft. Is this not Chip Kelly Memorial kind of? I'm the smartest man in the room. That's what I always didn't like about Chip, even when we've had him in on the show. He walks in and it's like, I know something you don't know. He's, his nose is up. He's arrogant. All the moves he made in Philadelphia were like, I'm going to show the league how stupid it is and how smart I am. And this, this is what happened with Joshua Garnett. I don't even know anything about I'm sorry. Forgive me. I don't know him. Mel Kuyper was just dumbfounded on the set saying, wait a second. They just traded up to take him 28th. I've got him ranked 67th on my big board. 67th. Think of that. From 67th to 28th, do they really know something that nobody else knows? And once again, with his connections, Chips, to, to that conference, Pac-12, obviously, he, he loves those players. He thinks they're somehow better, I don't know why, than other conference players, than SEC or Big 12 players or whatever you want to do, Big 10 players. And in this case, he goes for a Stanford guard, and we see the video... And he's not a dominator. He's not a mauler. I, I don't know what they're doing. So, so to me, 
they're both a little bit iffy for one being so high and then one being a trade up bottom of the first round 28th overall pick and that guy should have gone according to Mel Kuyper nothing but respect he should have gone maybe late second and probably in the third round what are you doing chip well a couple of uh, a couple of things i thought that Lewis Riddick coach Gruden and Mel Kuyper did a phenomenal job that's number 1 they were great. number 2 mm -hmm. along with everybody doing the draft last night for us it, it, I, I was proud of it it was a great job on all of their parts number 2 when you talk about chip kelly snubbing his nose and thinking he knows more than us the fact of the matter is he does know more than us that's not the problem the problem is is that he doesn't know more than a con than, than than the competition that he has he's scheduled to go up against Apparently and not. number 2 and, and and number 2 and more importantly it doesn't look like he does his due diligence because everybody he picks is from the is from the Pac-12 practically. I mean, could you expand your horizons? That's yeah. like me doing first take, but I don't watch anything but the NBA. What sense does that make? I mean, expand your horizons, get out there and work. Yeah. I, 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 I just USC. don't know. I just don't know what he's doing. Again, and then when you collaborate him with Trent Baalke, good luck with that in the Bay Area because I don't know if that's going to work out. I can tell you that much. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. Good luck. We'll see. I'm with you, Stephen A. First Take is brought to you by the Subway Sandwich Shop. Fresh is what we do. The new 2016 Lexus GS. Once you take control, there's no going back. And just for men, great looking hair made easy. After sitting and waiting in the draft green room for nearly the entire first round, Robert Kimdichie is headed to the desert. The card selected the defensive tackle with the 29th overall pick. Stephen A., you've been high on this guy all year long. Was Kimdichie the steal of the first round in your mind? I believe he was, but not just because of his talent. It's because of who he's going to play for. That, that would be Bruce Harry. This man is special as a coach, not just in terms of his football acumen, but his ability to relate to today's players. And I think when you talk about maximizing a potential like Robert Kimdichie, if you're able to do that, keep him off the weed and don't allow him to engage in any kind of nonsense, imagine what he would do. We haven't heard a word about Honey Badger that's been negative since he's arrived in Arizona. He's special. He's yep. been performing in a special fashion. And the same, I believe, has the potential to occur with Robert Kimdichie. I know I would have taken him if I'm Bruce Arians. And remember, Mark May came on the show and specifically talked about Kimdichie, potentially with he Arizona, did. and how beneficial that would be because of the leadership in the yeah. locker room with, with Peterson and those boys. I love this pick for Arizona, and Bruce Arians, as far as I'm concerned, is the perfect man for him. I hate to admit it. Yeah steal of the first round again a lot of things could go wrong i don't think they will in this environment i love bruce arians have nothing but respect for him patrick peterson nothing but respect the job that he's done being a big brother to tyron matthew and you got calais campbell and carson palmer you have veteran senior sort of leadership around this kid and they're going to teach him the ropes and the way and keep him locked in and plugged in make him prioritize football i i gotta say th this is such a good pick for a really good football team to steal him at 29 i'm reserving the right to say cardell jones wherever he goes also could be a steal and round who knows yep. three four who knows but for for last night bottom of the first round it was right on schedule congratulations arizona I agree. Let's not forget Absolutely. they got Chandler Jones, too. Uh, Chandler Jones. Right? Yeah, well, they're going to have to sort of look over yes, him, too. Yes, yes, yes. You know, he still, needs some babysitting I mean, occasionally. That was already a solid team last year. Yep. Listen, I will leave you all with this. Eli Apple, huh. welcome to the New York Football Giants. Annie Apple, we're excited for you. We're all yeah, on your we spot. we got to get her on the show. Yes. Annie, please come, <laughs> come on, on the show. Stage. We love you. More draft tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. So we will have much more Southern to discuss. Mark on Monday. Guys, have a great weekend. Stephen A., Skip, we'll see you all Monday. All right. Y'all do the same.